Merry Christmas. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we welcome you to our worship service on this first Sunday of the Christmas season. There is coffee immediately following the worship service. We hope you'll be able to stay for that today. In the church year, we are still in the season of Christmas, and uh, I should have made the decision or talked about it with Chelsea and Amy before this morning. We will, instead of singing uh, the glory to God in the highest for our hymn of praise, we'll sing angels we have heard on high this morning. Amy will uh, announce that again when we finish the Kyrie at the start of the worship service. Offering envelopes for the new year on a table on that side of the narthex. Please pick yours up if you have not yet done so. There are two important announcements from the Board of Youth Ministry about trips. The first uh, regarding the summer trip, July 14th to the 19th to South Dakota. And then the second about the overnight in January, that's the Friday night the 18th and Saturday the 19th. If you have questions about either of those, you can talk with Katie this morning. If you want to go on either trip, uh, let Katie know or me know today or uh, down the road. We thought it might be important for our members to know that on Sunday, January 13th, Pastor Joe Lees will be with us for the morning. Pastor Lees is a member of the St. Paul Area Synod staff, and he is the staff member who has been assigned to work with our congregation during the transition following my retirement and the formation of a call committee. I would think that the best turnout that we can have on the 13th would give him the best impression of our congregation. You might spread that word and keep that in mind for Sunday, January the 13th. Emily asked me to announce that the Come As You Are Choir will sing on the second Sunday of the month, that is on the 13th. There will be no choir rehearsal either this Wednesday or next Wednesday. The funeral for Lenore Ryder has been set. It will be on Monday, January the 7th at 11 in the morning. Visitation will begin at 10 here at the church. Please continue to remember Nick and Therese in your prayers. Finally, as I said on Christmas morning, I want to thank Amy for serving as the liturgist this morning. Uh, I have been fighting something that is attacking my vocal cords since Christmas Eve, and I appreciate very much having a colleague who is both able and willing to step in at a moment's notice. Thank you, Amy. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our service for confession and forgiveness is found on page 94 in the front of your hymnal. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. 
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. continue on page 147 in the front of your hymnal. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Defend 
as gracious Lord. We sing a Christmas carol, Angels We Have Heard on High, number 289. Prayer of the Day is printed on the front page of your bulletin. Let us pray. Shine into our hearts the light of your wisdom, O God, and open our minds to the knowledge of your word, that in all things we may think and act according to your good will, and may live continually in the light of your Son, Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The reading for this first Sunday of Christmas can be found in the first Samuel, chapter 2, verses 18 through 20 and 26. This can be found in your few Bibles in the Old Testament on page 246. A reading from 1 Samuel. Samuel was ministering before the Lord, a boy wearing a linen ephod. His mother used to make for him a little robe and take it to him each year when they went up to her husband, when they went up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Then Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife, and say, May the Lord repay you with children by this woman for the gift that she has made to the Lord. And then they would return to their home. Now the boy Samuel continued to grow both in stature and in favor with the Lord and with the people. The word of the Lord.
second reading can be found in the third chapter of Colossians, beginning with the 12th verse. This can be found in the New Testament on page 201, chapter 12 through 17. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you may also forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect, perfect harmony. And let's, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Gospel is written in the second chapter of the Gospel of Luke, beginning with the 41st verse. <coughs> you turn to page 59 in the New Testament portion of the Scripture, we'll read the Gospel together. Luke chapter 2, verses 41 through 52. Now every year, his parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. They went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. At his understanding and his answers. Parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. And came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Has the Bible already tired of Christmas? Here it is, December 30th. We're less than five days from celebrating one of the two or three holiest days in the year. And already the baby is gone from the story and the boy Jesus is age 12 and holding court in the temple. Doesn't that surprise us just a bit? I mean, at our house, the tree is still up, the presents aren't yet put away, nor are the thank yous all written, and there are still Christmas cookies and fudge and fruit enough to last for weeks. And yet in the story, the baby is already a boy of 12. How come? 
How come there's no more time to ponder with Mary the meaning of the birth? Why is there no interview with the shepherds? What was it really like when you heard those angels sing? Why do you think you heard them but no one else seemed to? When you got to the stable, what exactly did you see? Why, if he is the Savior in Christ, why was he born in a barn? How are we supposed to get the real meaning of Christmas if already on December 30th Jesus has moved on and his parents have moved on and we ourselves are being called to do the same? Could it be that somehow that is the point? More so than our thinking that when the baby woke, he was so perfect that he never even cried. Are we really supposed to believe that? Or is it more likely that 12 years after the birth of their son, a couple of parents could be so distracted that they didn't realize he wasn't with them until they'd already begun their journey home? That like some of us, once in a while, they too failed to communicate. One parent assumed the other knew where the boy was, that he was traveling with his friends or traveling with another family headed to Nazareth in the contingent that had walked to Jerusalem together. And is it more likely that he had also made unrealistic assumptions about his parents? That he assumed that they knew what he knew, that they would know he wasn't ready to go home, that he had more to see, more to absorb, more to consider and learn, and even, believe it or not, more to teach those in the temple who cared to listen to him. It wouldn't be the first time that a 12-year-old boy made assumptions that created or at least contributed to a crisis. And for those of us who wouldn't think the Son of God capable of that sort of behavior, what does it really mean that he was a human being and a 12-year-old male at that? Was he always in complete control? Did he always know what to do or how to say what needed to be said? Did he always know when to speak and when to listen? He was 12. And remember that even though he impressed the rabbis and priests with his questions and his answers, remember he never lived to see age 35 because in that very same temple he made enemies. Or he was considered to be their enemy by these very same clergy or the ones who had succeeded them. In the real world, Christmas is over. The malls are still full because of the after Christmas specials and sales. In the real world, for many, it's back to work. And what are your plans for New Year's Eve? And what do you hope the New Year itself will be like? In the real world, kings order baby boys hunted and killed because there is no life or power more important to the king than his own. And it is in this real world that the Christmas story takes place and in which the son of Mary and Joseph, the son of God himself, is already moving on. Because he has work to do. That's what he tells his parents when they finally find him in the temple. Child, why have you treated us like this? His mother asked him. Your father and I have been looking for you. Mother, why are you searching for me? And then we read, did you not know I must be in my father's house? But this is one of the few instances where the newer translation of the Bible is not as helpful as the old. Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? That's how the old King James reads. And that's the more accurate and the more telling because for Jesus it will be his conflict with that so-called house of God that will lead to his death. Whether you already knew that or not was perhaps not all that important on that day when he said that to his mother. After all, he was only 12. But for Luke who told the story and for us who hear it today, it matters that it is in this very real world where one day interested rabbis became caustic critics, and once polite priests paid 30 pieces of silver to have the adult son of Mary betrayed and arrested. It is here in this real world that his father's business is to be done. And the Christmas gospel is not complete 
without our hearing that truth. Did you notice when they did not find him in the group of travelers heading north, they returned to Jerusalem, and after three days they found him. Why three days? What are the key biblical numbers? Seven, the number of days in a week. Twelve, the number of the sons of Jacob and the tribes of Israel, as well as the number of disciples Jesus called to leave their families and work and follow him. Forty, the number of days Noah spent in the ark. Jesus was 40 days in the wilderness, which is also the same number of years Moses led the freed slaves once God had set them free from their bondage in Egypt. And then there is the number three. Three as in the Trinity, but maybe even more importantly, three as in how many days from his death Jesus would be raised from the dead. After three days, they found him. As in the real world, two decades later, on the Sunday after his death, he would once again be found going about his father's business, asking questions, certainly, who do you say that I am? Or if someone who owes a debt, a small debt, has been forgiven, and someone who owes a great debt has been forgiven as well, who do you think will be the more grateful? Not only asking questions, but he was teaching and preaching. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. In my father's house are many rooms. I am the resurrection and the life. If any would come after me, let him deny themselves and take up their own cross and follow me. Without that, not only the questions and the teaching, but Jesus' willingness to do for them rather than rethink or recant or retract or retreat from what he said and did, none of the rest matters. Then Christmas is only the invention of the retailers. Well, and the psychiatrists who know that you and I need something to look forward to in the bleak midwinter, especially of our favorite football team, is not going very far in the playoffs. That's why in this story there is such significant movement. And already the baby is a boy of 12, and there are already hints about three days, and what when he's in his 30s, a similar three days will separate. Is that all for you and me a disappointment? Because we'd rather hear again about a manger and some shepherds and a mother who ponders but who at least knows where her firstborn is? Or is it for us a word that challenges us? Because the Savior who is Christ the Lord had work to do, work to do for your sake and for mine. And so he grew and even matured because at one point he was only 12. But when he got most serious about his father's business, he told the truth. The truth that we are loved, that he who made us in his image forgives us from the bottom of his heart, and not just once, but daily, always, because that's the price our God pays to let nothing separate us from him and his love. And that he loves you and me as his children means that we are now connected, that Christmas is is not only about who we might have been with last Monday or Tuesday, but that you and I are now a family. Because those are not just empty words that we use to welcome a child into the family when we are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. It is literally true that we are a family, and there are others, some like us and many more not, who are also members with us of the family and the kingdom of God. Some of our brothers and sisters hurting because of losses they suffered of their health or a loved one who's died or a marriage or a job or a dream or hope lost so that they, as do we, they need to know that they are loved and that by God's grace, maybe you or I could be of some help. For some of us, that'll be why we go back to work whenever we do or if we haven't already. For it's why we might look for work, because we're still being called, but our circumstances and specifics have changed. And it will be why some of us pick up the phone, or get in the car, or reach out to someone who's just spent the holiday without a loved one. They miss more than we will ever know. And for some of us, 
It will be the reason we pray before we eat or before we start something important, to ask for help or to give thanks for what we've already received. Or maybe we'll teach a class or sign up to take a class or we'll recognize and see some other opportunity in this very real world where the Christmas story is far from finished and where its meaning, the real meaning of Christmas, is still being revealed. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding, guard and keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed printed on page 127 in the front of your hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray for God's people and all of God's creation. Heavenly Father, we are reminded today that our Lord Jesus has come as a person to be our Lord, a person who lived faithfully and yet brought worry to a family who loved him. Keep us faithful, Lord, in our call to raise and guide and lead the children in our lives, not only those in our homes, but all of the children who you bring into our lives. Let us see them as the gift they truly are, and give us all wisdom in our caring. 
Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, especially during this holiday season, we often remember those we have loved who now rest in your eternal care. You know the depth of grief your children have, and you promise to see us through the valley of the shadow of death. Look with favor and compassion on those who grieve these days. Especially we pray, O oh Lord, for all who have loved and lo- now miss Lenore Ryder and Norma Harrisville, Jim Milliken, Dorothy Lepkis, and Augie Guevara, Daryl Narvison, and Doug Harden, Harry Erickson, Owen Loftus, and Nola Hovland, Calvin Wilson, Arlo Stack, and Dorothy Miller, Ed Zatola, Dick and Gloria Clausen, Stephen Yembo, and Ed Deeg. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of all life, you breathe newness into all of creation. So we pray that your healing and restoration would be granted for those who await wholeness. We pray especially this day for all those we name silently and aloud before you. Lord, in your mercy, we give you thanks, O God, for this land we call home. Let us take not for granted the many gifts you give us, being citizens of these United States. Guide us to use the privileges you have given us for the sake of those who are in need. Make us bold to speak, brave to stand firm. Give us courage to reach out and peace to trust that you are providing for all your children. Guide leaders of our nation and around our world with your wisdom and let all of your children see you in each other. Lord, in your mercy. All this and whatever else you see that we need, grant it in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
offering prayer is printed on page 3 in your bulletin. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. (laughs) 